year off is, is a long time. I mean, a year off with no rugby is, is, is hard. So to know that, you know, you're going to go out there and the, the, the bullets are flying, if you will, um, it's, it's a little bit nerve wracking, but you know, that's why you play and that's, that's what you look forward to. So I'm sure, uh, I'm sure once that whistle blows, things will things will calm down a little bit. Another MLR mic check. I'm Danny Wexelman here with Old Glory's Jack Iscaro, and it's a big week. It is game week. Jack, can you even believe that I am saying those words to you? Yeah, it's it's pretty surreal. It's been a it's been over a year now, so very excited to be back into it. By the time you all do play your first match, it will have been 377 days. That's a lot of days. So how good does it feel to know that the season is here, it is starting, and you guys are going to be back playing? Uh, very exciting. Um, we've been working real hard and um, just really proud of the uh, the team and the league to to do the work they've done to get us back in a place where we're able to play. I want to rewind a little bit back to 2020. You missed the season with an injury, a shortened season. So it didn't end up being too terrible. Maybe a chance for you to rehab a little bit. You're back now. Your squad opens up this season against New Orleans on Fox Sports 2, 4 p.m. Eastern. How excited are you and the team? Oh, yeah, I'm, I'm uh, ecstatic. Um, obviously gutted last year uh, to miss out uh, on, like you said, a, short, a bit of a shortened season. But um, obviously worked really hard to get back to this point. And, um, myself and the team are very, very excited to, uh, kickstart in NOLA, um, a little bit of a, uh, redemption game for us, if you will. Um, they, uh, they really gave us a rough int introduction to the league last year and we're looking to come back and kind of right that ship. So very excited. Yeah. I wanted to ask you about that. So the only loss for you all last season. Does that fuel the fire? Have you been talking about it? Yeah, I, you know, you, you want to focus on yourself uh, and your and your own um, process and whatnot. So you don't spend all too much time uh, thinking about the opponent, but um, I'd be lying if I said it's not, you know, in the back of our heads that this is a, a big week for us and, you know, all the credit to them. Um, you know, they, 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 performed extremely well last year and we're just looking to uh to come back and match that and show them how well we've progressed so i'm not privy to being on the sidelines with you all during practice i'm not there for this week it's such an exciting week and i'm sure that there's adrenaline pumping and just a lot going on but kind of paint me a picture of what it looks like and it sounds like and you know what guys are saying as you lead up to opening weekend yeah um you know you do hear every 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 so often somebody make a comment about you know this is this is a game week we're really going to play and um obviously we've had a, a bit of a rough go in preseason missing out on some preseason game opportunities and so it feels all the more real uh this week that you know we are going down there to uh to play a match and it's going to be a big one so very excited and obviously like you said the adrenaline's going and uh, it feels a little bit different this week, yeah. An exciting week. And I'm going to jump ahead because why not? Let's talk about the home opener, which I know everyone is super excited about as well, March 27th against Rugby ATL. And you guys have reached capacity for fans for the start of the season, which is wild and exciting. No cardboard cutouts in the stands for you guys. A lot of sports teams didn't see fans the entire year in 2020 some still in 2021 don't even have fans yet so how hyped are you guys to see the fans in the stands and bring some entertainment to them no oh, i couldn't be happier um when we saw the uh that we had gotten the go ahead to um to have some fans there it was it was really um welcoming i mean it's it's a byproduct of the work done you know by our uh front office and and the you know people on the front lines doing the doing the real work um, and it just makes it all the better. I mean, you know, you play in front of fans, that's why you do it. You love to, uh, to put on a show and to, to get the support in person, it makes all the difference. So um, to have that <clears throat> capacity uh, limit reached already, it's, it's, it's great knowing that they're going to be there and, uh, you know, we're going to be playing in front of them. I was reading about at the end of training sessions, you all have some sort of cheers and maybe different words are used and said. So can you kind of, you know, fill me in on some of the words that you use, what they symbolize, what maybe your favorite is? 
Yeah, I mean, we've, we're, we're quite a diverse team, as a lot of the teams in this league are. And so you've got guys, um, you know, from New Zealand, Samoa, Fiji, you know, all over the place. So they bring a bit of their own flair. And um, we sort of started with, uh, well, Danny Tusitala, our, our scrum half, started it. Um, started with a, uh, I don't know what you'd call it, but a bit of a, like a, like a break or a cheer. And um, during training, it's fun because, you know, usually we, somebody gets picked, you know, it's not really set in stone, sort of spur of the moment, someone gets picked and they usually have to make something up on the spot. And so they, they get a little creative with it and usually use something that is relative to where they're from. Uh, so you get quite a lot of, uh, you know, different things and, um, it's, a, it's, it's always fun to, to see what they're going to come up with in the moment. But, uh, I do think a lot of it comes back to, you know, we are, um, you know, a big family and, um, it's, uh, it, it is something that I think has grown into our culture and we enjoy doing it. I think that's awesome. And I look forward to hearing more, maybe some future word choices that you all have as the season goes on. And speaking of the guys on your team, so the old glory retained a lot of the roster, but also added a lot new depth. And I'm wondering maybe if you can kind of go up and down and tell me about some of those new faces who will be on the team. Right off the bat, um, Callum Gibbons is a, uh, is a Kiwi that spent a lot of time in the UK or in uh, Scotland. Um, and I got to know him a bit um, when I went over to Glasgow for, for a preseason. And um, I mean, when I was over there, he was uh, probably the guy I looked up to the most. He was a, a captain over there, made, you know, consistent team of the year in Europe. And um, I think he's probably one of the most underrated, uh, underpublicized signings in the league this year and um he's taken on a bit of a player coach um role for us which has been fantastic uh he's he's done an incredible job and um he's really really a, an inspirational guy and um i look forward for for all the fans and uh people to to be able to see and get to know Callum because he, he's a pretty special guy um we brought in uh, luke campbell he's a canadian international uh great player and then up front, which was a bit of a, um, you know, a weak point for us. We, we really shored up our front row. We uh, got Jamie Deaver and uh, <clears throat> Stevie Longwell, who's a, another Scottish guy. Um, and they've just been awesome so far to work with and really looking to, uh, to write the ship. Um, to, go, to go on, we've got uh, one of my former teammates from, from Cal Berkeley, Sam Cassano, one of my best friends uh, and roommate now. So it's, uh, a little bit of um, a little bit reminiscent for me to have him around. Uh, and Demonte Noble is a, uh, a for people in the U.S. A lot of us know him as you know probably some of the best feet in uh, in rugby. So he's uh, he's really fun to have on the side. Um, and uh, just today, actually, uh, Stan South, uh, Harlequins Exeter uh, Premiership player, uh, got here. So we're looking forward to having him join the squad. Uh, I think I got everybody. I could be missing out one or two, but just because they've uh, we've got to know them so well, they don't feel like new players anymore. Yeah, that honestly, that's outstanding that you just named all those guys and gave me like, yeah. an incredible bio about them. So I'm impressed. I'm very impressed. But, and I want to talk about you a little bit, a lot of it, actually. So the rumor is that you were born with a ball in your hand. Your family is, is a rugby f family. Dad and sister both played. And I, I have had the privilege of looking through your social media and kind of seeing how you've evolved your hairstyle and uh. you. So I'm wondering, we're gonna get to the hairstyle in a minute. As far as your game goes on the field, how has it evolved from your early days to the Maryland Exiles and Gonzaga College High School? I was a bit lucky compared to most in the US. I, I definitely grew up with rugby. Um, my dad is, uh, is from Italy and, um, played a lot over there and so growing up it was you know I played all the regular sports I did the regular stuff but rugby was always something that I I knew was kind of I was meant to play and um, when it did come time to start playing when I was probably nine or ten um, I just it was the one sport that I I felt at home and you know I didn't have to I didn't have to cut weight like I did in football and uh, it just it felt like home for me and so um, Obviously, I have an older brother that I was playing that plays. Um, my younger sister um, 
dad coached me in, you know, high school and, uh, it's always been a bit of a family affair. That's kind of the sport that, that brought us all together. Um, mom has uh, has sat through a fair share of games. She's she's a, she's pretty much a, a pro in her own right at this point. But yeah, it's it's I I think being able to be coached by my dad uh, and you know win a few like high school national championships is you can't really ask for a better better introduction to the sport. Um, and so. Yeah, it's, it, rugby means a lot to me and my family. Not only is it a family affair, but you're a hometown kid <laughs> and you have the opportunity to play rugby in the United States for your hometown team. Did you ever think that was possible? And now that like you are living the dream, what does it feel like? It's funny you ask because it's sort of things moved so quickly with the league and, and all that and coming to, coming to old glory that it was hard to kind of sit back and think about how crazy it really was that I was actually doing, you know, able, had this opportunity. I think it feels all the more real now. And um, yeah, it's, it's, it's incredible. I mean, growing up in the U S playing rugby, it's always sort of one of those things that seems like a far off dream because you look to Europe, you look to the Southern hemisphere to, to watch the pros play. And it felt like a, a distant dream and um, to have it, here in my backyard and my parents live 40 minutes away and can come to the games and everything yeah it's very special and um i think the area is a very proud rugby community and so to have such a good team um represent the area you know i I couldn't be happier and um you're right it it is it is absolutely a, a uh a blessing and a great opportunity so i i'm very thankful for the people that put this in place what can fans and myself expect to see from old glory that you've been building up and preparing for when it comes to opening weekend, but also this 2021 season? Um, yeah, it's, it's, you know, you obviously don't want to, you know, look too too much in the past as you move into a new season, but we want to kind of pick up where we left off. Um, I think we kind of found ourselves a little bit, uh, when we went on a, a bit of a, a bit of a run there before the season got called. And I think we've just come back in with a, with our a few more of our bases covered. Um, we've got a bit more of a, our fundamentals down in our set piece. And um, I think we retained a bit of that flair and speed that we like to play with. But I think that the thing that might, you know, hopefully separate us is, it's just, um, you know, we have a very special group of guys that uh, have a fantastic cult team culture and really want to work for each other. And we want to win. Um, we want to play well. We want to, you know, put on a show for the fans. I think we're really uh, committed to um, to just putting out the best version of ourselves we can. And, and, and if that means picking up where we left off last year, then, then that's a, a great, great start. Do you have butterflies? Is that is that a weird thing to ask? Are you like nervous, excited? Yeah, I, I mean, I, I definitely do. I think just because I, you know, I had been lucky to avoid avoid injury um, most of my career, and um, you know, a year off is is a long time. I mean, a year off with no rugby is is, is hard. So to know that you know you're going to go out there and the 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 bullets are flying, if you will. Um, it's it's a little bit nerve wracking, but you know that's why you play and that's that's what you look forward to. So I'm sure uh, I'm sure once that whistle blows, things will things will calm down a little bit. It's time for some bonus points, and I'm pretty proud of these questions. I did a deep dive on your social media and feel very confident that these will all hit home for you. So the first one, one word, one sentence answers. First one for you is if you had to get an I heart redheads tattoo where would you get it oh man you gotta you gotta put that one out on the on the shoulder or something like uh yeah i don't know i don't know if i want anybody seeing that maybe i hide it i don't know okay what about the best mustache on your team uh that's a good one there's a few in the running for that i think um it's a i think it's a canadian showdown you got kieran hearn and luke campbell but i think luke campbell's got it he's got a bit of like a Tom Selleck, like big, big mustache. I wish I could, I wish I could grow a mustache like him. You're no stranger to dressing up. I've, I've seen a couple of costumes. So I have to ask you, what is your favorite Halloween costume? I recently, I I did a little bit of a crossover. I went to, I went with a buddy of the elf onesie that I have that I threw that one on on Halloween, caught caught some people off guard, but it was a good little crossover. 
big onesie guy. Breaking news here, big onesie guy. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. If you could have dinner with an athlete, past or present, who would it be? I hate to be cliche, but I'd, I'd, I'd have to go with uh, Michael Jordan. I hate, I know it's like the easiest layup of an answer, but I just, yeah, I, I'd love to like pick his brain. I think he's the coolest dude ever. Um, I just think that would be unreal. We accept that answer. That answer is yeah, absolutely like, okay. I mean, there's a million answers to give there. I know that you guys are pretty strict with your diets and a lot of you are, are pretty clean. So when it comes to a cheat meal, what's your vice? What's your go-to? I love pizza. Uh, I, I absolutely love pizza. I think I could eat, I think I could eat five pies myself, but, um, Pizza is definitely like a Friday night pizza. That was a big thing in my family. We had pizza every Friday night. Um, but uh, yeah, I'd go either pizza or burritos. I think that's a, a neck and neck race for me. I love them both. You and Ryan both chose pizza. I fully and wholeheartedly support any and all pizza choices always. I appreciate that. What about a team hype man? Like who's the guy running around with their head cut off, just getting everybody so jacked up? Danny Susatella, every time, every time. He's a, he's a wild man. He just doesn't stop. Um, and uh, he's been, he got back here not, not too long ago. He had, um, he had just, uh, his wife had just given, um, given birth. So he just got back not too long ago. And it was like right where he left off, just never missed a beat, right back into it. Just da 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 da. And um, I mean, we all love it. So I, I'm a big fan. But yeah, Danny's the hype man, the hype man. The league is expanding. It's really exciting to see not only team wise, but the international sightings. And of course, the MLR collegiate draft, the first one last year. So the league is just really exploding in a lot of different ways. When you look and see the guys who have come over internationally, the guys who have been signed, is there a team or, or a person you're looking forward to facing and seeing? I think it's awesome. Like. I uh, obviously I grew up a rugby fan, so a lot of these names are are all too familiar for me. Um, in terms of uh, somebody I'd love to face, um, I mean it's hard to it's hard to narrow it down. I think like I mean Chris Robshaw is obviously a, a legend in his own right. Um, uh, ben Foden in New York. I mean these are all guys that. Uh, have had some pretty unbelievable careers. Um, it's just, uh, it is a cool feeling to, to, to be on the field with them potentially and um, just to uh, be playing in the same league as them is, is, is really cool. What about a message to the fans? What do you want to say to the fans who are going to be watching this? Um, I just, you know, it's probably start off by saying, you know, thank you for the, the support for this league. Um, being an American that's, Grown up here playing rugby, I think uh, it's kind of a dream we all shared to have a league one day in the U.S. And um, the fans really make it possible. Uh, so I would thank them for their patience in this off season. It's kind of tested us all for sure. And um, I would just say that I'm really looking forward to to, to enjoying the rugby with them and, and hopefully seeing them in person at some point in the near future. Somebody or something that inspires you. Not to be uh, too cliche or mushy gushy but you know my dad is a big inspiration for me he's a uh, you know in the rugby front he's been my coach he's a player he was a player um obviously I look up to him but uh he's the first person I call after a game or um talk to when you know I have things going on in my life so um my dad's definitely a huge inspiration for me and he's, he's you know he's the reason I got into the sport and uh I'm glad and lucky that I have a great relationship with him. Last one. One thing about you I cannot find on the internet. I'm probably Chipotle's uh, number one East Coast customer. Uh, I like to think that I provide them with a, a lot of their business. And um, I've, we, I've got a little crew that on our team that we go on Tuesdays and get Chipotle. Um, so, yeah, there you go. Chipotle, if you're out there, come find me. Send him a card, send him a black card, get this guy on the list. He shouldn't pay for a burrito another day in his life. <laughs> that's, that's the real dream. That's the real dream. 
Man, Jack, thank you so much. Really excited for the season for you guys to get back and for you specifically to be able to get back on the pitch and competing again. And I appreciate your time. I know it's a big week. Um, so good luck this season and thank you again. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it.